A significant geothermal site near the Simbawang Hot Springs. Scientists say it could be a consistent source of clean energy, good enough to power district cooling systems as an example of that. The team behind the study is from NTU and Tumcreate, the Technical University of Munich, multi multidisciplinary research platform in Singapore. The team is working with Sabana and Jewel on this. And let's dig deeper into this development with our guest, principal scientist Dr. Tobias Massier from TUMCREATE and associate professor Alessandro Romagnoli. He's cluster director at Multi Energy Systems and Grids Energy Research Institute at NTU Singapore. He joins us on Zoom from Morodalba in Italy. Good evening to both of you. Dr. Massiet, let's begin with you. Explain to us the significance of this discovery in Singapore. Oh, it is indeed significant because when we talk about non-fossil resources of energy in Singapore, you usually talk about solar photovoltaics and that's it. But now a new, very interesting player comes into the game. Now we have to keep in mind that this is only the beginning of, of a longer journey. We just started with this exploration, but geothermal energy has quite a lot of advantages over photovoltaics. For instance, indeed, it provides continuous energy, constant energy. It's not um, subject to fluctuations. And um, uh, you can do so much more as compared to photovoltaics. You can only produce electricity with photovoltaics, but with geothermal energy, you have a lot more applications uh, that you can use here in Singapore. We also have to keep in mind that these are only two bits in the huge journey to decarbonize, decarbonizing Singapore. Right? Even so, this study is considerable. Now, drilling, I was reading online, actually started in October 2021. But yeah. I take it funding and the research that goes into getting the funding yeah. started long before that. So very quickly, before we head to the professor, if you could tell us what kicked off this idea and what was very quickly, what was the process uh, by which we then have uh, arrived at the current conclusion. Yeah, there have been previous theoretical studies on the geothermal potential of Singapore and their results were not, not very promising. So we thought we could give it another go with some actual drilling on site. So NTU and Tum Create applied for funding at the National Research Foundation together. And after, I think, 18 months, we finally got the go and we could start this project. Exciting. Professor Romagnoli, let's bring you into the conversation now. Uh, tell us your reaction to the results of the study. Did it surprise you? Well, I mean, um, to be honest with you, the, the way we started this project, like uh, my colleagues just mentioned, and we look at certain uh, surface features in uh, Singapore, uh, like the hot springs in Semba Wang and in, the, in Tekong. And also we were aware of some simulation studies in the past that uh, indicated for some potential uh, hot temperatures at a relatively shallow depth. So the aim of our study was that to validate this funding through uh, measured data. And that's how we started uh, this project. So we started to develop a, a temperature distribution map for Singapore by collecting shallow boreholes uh, data. And then we drilled this uh, deep borehole at 1.1 kilometer near Admiralty Lane. And that is where we could see that uh, if you try to estimate and evaluate the, the trend and the temperature gradient uh, of the, uh, the rock uh, all the way down to four or five kilometer depth, uh, we could I didn't estimate the 200 degrees Celsius or more um, of temperature available at those steps, which make it very interesting for a number of uh, applications. So, I mean, I would say, did this result surprise me? Uh, yes, and uh, and I would say we should uh, be, uh, but uh, I would say just a very initial uh, step towards a certain and assessing whether geothermal could be really be made uh, uh, available for Singapore. Uh, very quickly, and if you could, uh, because it would, uh would help a layman like ourselves uh, as we are understand this. So you're talking about temperatures, so 60 to 90 degrees Celsius. I take it, is that what you're finding right now? And if you drill deeper, which comes with its own difficulties, you would find uh, things at greater temperature, which have more functions, but then there would be cost to that. In Singapore, is there potential for this? Yeah, I mean... 
Yeah. Uh, so in fact, is is a uh, no. No, no secret that if we deep, uh, drill deeper, eventually, as we drill deeper, we will find higher temperatures. The question is, uh, at what depth we can identify temperatures high enough that can be uh, made available for uh, extraction and utilization. So a, far, a four to five kilometer depth is somewhat considered uh, viable, uh, looking at current heat extraction and the utiliz utilization technology. But of course, uh, uh, as I said, I mean, uh, um, there is a two-fold aspect to be taken into account. First, we need to ascertain the extent and the capacity of this geothermal heat in Singapore. On the other side, we also need to monitor how the technology is currently developing worldwide for what it concerns uh, uh, extracting and utilizing heat at those uh, depth. Looking at the pace of development of technologies that we can see worldwide, that gives us a full side in an optimistic perspective that geothermal could potentially be um, utilized uh, in Singapore over the next, uh, this decade or the next, in fact. Dr. Marcia, I want to get your take on the utilization of geothermal energy a little bit more. And earlier you did yeah. make, you know, you did use a comparative with photo, uh, photovoltaics and, and uh, just how different this a discovery might be. We understand that it could be used to power district cooling systems as well. Right. What else might it be used for? It, it depends on the available temperature. So at 150 degrees Celsius, we can talk about electricity generation, for instance. If we have even higher temperatures, we could even produce hydrogen. Um, but we will not say we just produce one output. Right, so we could start at a high temperature, produce, generate electricity. Then the outcome of that process is a lower temperature of the geothermal fluid. And then we produce energy for cooling. And with the remaining temperature, we then do something else such as desalination. And at the end, we could do some recreational uh, stuff like spas or whatever. Mm. You know? So there's a lot to do. And my opinion is that especially, particularly for cooling, there's quite a high potential because currently, we use natural gas, burn it, convert it to electricity, and then convert it to cool air. That's basically what happens in an air conditioner, right? Right. With geothermal power, we could use the heat that, that we get directly from it immediately for cooling, which would have a much higher efficiency. And with upcoming data centers and growing population, this is so important. So we could really cover quite a bit of the cooling demand here in Singapore. A number of use, potential uses then. But mm. it would also require accompanying technologies such as absorption chillers, if you could just explain that very quickly Definitely. for us. Yeah. yeah, of course, the technology, I mean, again, we are at the start of this and we would not do it household-wise. You need a central geothermal plant. It has to be set up somewhere. We have to do more studies. And then we could have a, such a district cooling plant or smaller cooling systems in different places of Singapore that could then supply households, data centers, and other um, players. Uh, Professor Romagnoli, a, a quick final question for you before we go, because we're running out of time here. How crucial would this discovery be potentially in alleviating Singapore's energy challenges? We do face that, as, as do other jurisdictions. Yeah, I mean, so geothermal is a, is a renewable energy. Uh, in fact, and um, the geothermal uh, energy and geothermal uh, utilization uh, facilities are designed to last between 20 to 30 years or even more than that. So now, should the extent and the capacity of the geothermal energy available to be substantial enough, as you can infer, uh, we could potentially be uh, having a cost and durable and clean energy supply for Singapore over the next few decades. Of course, I mean, there are still challenges ahead because we need to uh, see the development of uh, deep drilling technologies and also we need to understand the extent of the geothermal heat. And also we need to evaluate the safety and viability of extracting geothermal energy at commercial scale. But having said so, like my colleague just mentioned, mentioned just now, I mean, Singapore renewable landscape is limited to solar. So having geothermal could be a, a, a very interesting uh, additional element to uh, in, enhance the energy mix uh, of Singapore 
and also to provide energy security and er er resiliency to the entire country. Uh, thanks, gentlemen, both of you for coming in, especially Dr. Massey for coming in, sharing information on this subject. Principal scientist Dr. Tobias Massier from Tumcreate and Associate Professor Alessandro Romanelli from the Energy Research Institute at NTU Singapore. Thank you. Thank you.